Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is Modeling Exponential Growth and Decay. So this is Module 15-2. Okay, now this one uh, is asking you to have a graphing calculator. My students don't have a graphing calculator, so I'm just going to go through the motions on this video, and I will do this in my class as well, you guys. So, uh, And then we'll talk about the math behind it. So. So how can we use uh, exponential functions to model uh, the increase or decrease of a quantity over time? Okay, so uh, so we're going to go ahead and describe the end behavior of a growth function. So here's a, it, it's asking you to uh, use a graphing calculator. Okay, my students don't have this, so I'm not going to demonstrate this on here. But we'll talk about it. So uh, for the function f of x equals 200 times 1.10 1 uh, to the x, okay? So this looks like it has a 10% increase. It's 100% plus 10%, so it's 1.1. And then on the graphing calculator feature, you got y sub 1. And my students, again, don't have this. So, so this y sub 1 is what we're going to plug in. We're going to plug this into the y sub 1. Okay, and if you don't have a graphing calculator, I'm just going to talk through this. So a viewing window, so they'll give you this screen, and on your calculator, you'll have this screen as long as you uh, plug in the viewing window from uh, uh, negative 20 to 20 for x with a scale of 2. And what that means is these little tick marks are going by 2. So here's negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And so that's all the way to positive 20 over there. Okay, and then from negative 100 to 1,000 for y with a scale of 50. So this would be 50, 100, 150, 200, and so on, all the way up to 1,000 up there. Okay, and then um, uh, so we'll sketch this curve. So when we plug it in, we'll hit the graph feature, and it'll give us a graph that kind of looks like that right there, okay? So we'll talk about this graph, and we'll talk about the end behavior, okay? And so it'll ask you to uh, use your trace feature to move it along to the right. Let me just slide that up. To move it along to the right and notice how x decreases and describe the behavior. Okay, so so a trace feature will put a little cursor right here and you hit you hit to the, the right button, it'll keep going, and somewhere on your screen you'll see an x equals and a y equals. And so as we're going to the right, x is getting bigger. This is x right here. So as we go to the right, x gets bigger, and what happens, you'll see the y number is getting bigger also, because this graph is growing right here. Okay, so so as x increases without bound, the graph goes larger, and it also increases. It goes to infinity. All right, so again, use the trace feature. Well, we're just going to use my little cursor right here and move the cursor to the left. So as x goes to negative infinity or decreases without bound, this graph is going closer and closer and closer to this line right here, the x-axis, which is uh, y equals 0. So as x decreases without bound, the graph will approach, but it will never hit uh, 0, okay? And so this is going to be called an asymptote or asymptote, depending on what your teacher says. They might even say something else. So anyway, so, uh, so describe the domain and range of the function using inequalities. Okay, so the domain is your x and uh, 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 right movement. So x could go over here forever and ever and ever, and x could go over here for ever and ever and ever, so that would be to negative infinity and positive infinity. So our domain is our x's, x is between negative infinity and positive infinity. Remember sideways 8 is infinity. And our range is everything, it doesn't go to negative infinity because that would be down here and the graph doesn't go to that. So our graph is above the x-axis which is y, so uh, your range is a y answer and that's a up and down movement right here, so <clears throat> excuse me. It goes up forever, but it doesn't go down. It goes down to zero, so it's not quite zero, so it's y is greater than zero. Okay, so identify the y-intercept of the graph. So the y-intercept is, is that point right there. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's when x equals zero. So if we plugged in x equals zero right here, this would be one. Anything to the zero equals one. So the, the y-intercept's at 200 right there. So when x equals zero, the y-intercept is 200, okay? 
So an asymptote or asthmatote, I like to say asthmatote, an asthmatote of the graph is a line that the graph appro approaches closely. So identify the asthmatote. So that would be the, the line y equals zero. Okay, so it's approaching this line right here. When we go down in this direction right here, it'll keep going and, and it'll infinitely get close to y equals zero, but it'll never cross it. So discuss uh, uh, why is the value of the function always greater than zero? Well, since a positive number, so here's our positive number right here, is going to be multiplied by another positive number because when I do uh, this number to a uh, uh, a positive power right there. It's going to be just another positive number. It's always going to, a positive times a positive is always positive. So it would be impossible for the growth function to go below the x-axis, okay? Something like that. All right, so describe the end behavior of the, de of the decay function, okay? So same thing, you guys. We're going to plug uh, this into our calculator. And this one's decay because this is less than 1 right here. It's 0.8. Okay, and so our scales are going to go from uh, negative 10 to positive 10 for x and scale factor of 1. So what that means is on your calculator, once you uh, specify it's a scale of 1, each tick mark is 1. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and then uh, for the scale factor from negative 500 to 5,000 with a scale factor of 500, this would be negative 500, this would be 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and so on, all the way up to 5,000 right there. So when we sketch this uh, this exponential function in the graphing calculator and hit our graphing feature, it should look something like that. Okay, now I did this with my, my finger on my little laptop right here, so it'd be a much smoother curve than my what my finger could do right there. So if I was in my classroom, I'd use my Promethean board. Anyway, so, so we're going to use the trace feature and move the cursor along to the right. Okay, so we're going to go to the right right here and describe the behavior. Well, as we go to the right, this graph goes down to y equals 0. Okay, so as x increases without bound to the right, the graph approaches but never hits zero. So do the same, move it to the left. So as we go x to the left, then this goes up to infinity right here. So as x decreases without bound, because we're going to the left, the graph grows larger and exponentially in an increasing rate. All right, so here's our graph. So describe the domain and range uh, using inequalities. Okay, so the domain is left and right movement. So that's x. x is between negative infinity and positive infinity. And this graph goes up to infinity, but it's over here on this side. So, so the range is a y answer. So y is greater than 0. So identify the y-intercept. Okay, the y-intercept is right there when x equals 0. So if we plug in 0 right here, this is 1. So 500 is uh, going to be the our y-intercept. So the y-intercept is at, at 0. Is it 200 or 500? I guess it's 200. Sorry, I just misinterpreted that. So let me see that graph. No, it's 500 right there. So that should be 500. Okay, so let me fix that right there. This should be uh, 500 right here. Sorry. And then, um, so identify the asymptote of this graph. Okay, so the asymptote of this graph is going to be the line again, y equals zero right there. Okay. All right. And it'll never hit. Okay, so so the uh, we're going to model uh, exponential growth and decay. Okay, so exponential growth has this feature. So it's uh, y equals a times 1 plus r to the t. And then this one, the exponential decay is just 1 minus r to the t. These guys are the same, except growth has a, we're adding the rate, and uh, decay is we're subtracting the rate. Okay, and the 1 plus r or 1 minus r is our growth rate or our decay rate so it just depends on what R is and if it's growth or decay and T is time time and whatever our time interval is so we're gonna go ahead and write an exponential growth function here and then uh, graph the function and state its domain and range and asymptotes and what does the y-intercept represent so here we go a painter uh, is a painting is sold for eighteen hundred dollars and its value increases by eleven percent each year after it's sold so find the value of the painting in, in thirty years so this is a growth one okay because it increases so we're gonna add eleven 11%, so it's going to be 1 plus 11% or 1.11 to the t. 
t meaning in years. So this is our initial amount right here, and then this is our, our growth factor right there. So after 30 years, we just plug in 30 right there, and then so we plug that into our calculator. You can do that on a scientific calculator. I did it on my phone uh, yesterday. So 1.11 to the 30, and then I took that and hit it times 1,800, and so I get about $41,206. So the after 30 years, the painting will be worth about that. Okay, so now it said graph the function. So now we've got to create a table of values. So let's create a table of values. Now this is what I'm going to require my students to do. Okay, so anything to the zero power equals one, so we get 1800. All right, so now we're going to plug in t equals 8 right there. And when we plug in t equals 8, then 1.11 to the 8th power is 2.30, and then we multiply that times 1800, and we get that. So we're going to plot 8, 4148. Don't worry, they give us a graph to do that. There's t equals 16, there's t equals 24, and finally t equals 32. So we're going to use that table to create a graph. So we're going to plot 0, 1800, okay? Well, if this is 11,000, this is 5,500 right here, so 0, 1800 would be right about there, okay? 8, 4,148 4, is going to be right about there. So when we plot all those points, they're going to be those guys right there. There they are right there. So there's our exponential growth function. And typically an exponential growth function is sort of a J sort of shape right here. It might go up steeper depending on the function, depending on this guy right here. The bigger this is, the steeper it goes. The smaller this is, the less steep it'll go. Some of them barely grow, barely, barely grow, and you'll see some of them almost look like a line, but they're not. So what's the domain and range? Our domain is how far does it go to the right or left? Well, it doesn't go to the left past zero, so it does equal zero, so our domain is uh, y is greater than, or I'm sorry, it's an x answer, uh, which is in this case a t answer, so t is greater than or equal to zero. And then our range is um, starts at 1800 right there so our range was uh, and it goes up it keeps going so y is greater than or equal to 1800 and asymptote would be y equals zero if we had an asymptote okay so an asymptote if it kept going down it doesn't go past uh, zero right there but I guess it would be zero because it asymptotically goes towards zero and the y-intercept is the value when, uh, of y when t equals 0, which is the value of the beginning of the painting at $1,800 when it was first sold. All right, let's do another one for a decay function. So here, the population of a town is decreasing at a rate of 3% per year. See, that's not very much. So uh, you'll see that this is, is a, a less steep of an uh, exponential one. So in 2005, there were 1,600 people. Find the population in 2013. So we're going to write an exponential function for this. So it's going to be 1 minus, because it's decaying, you guys. So 1 minus the 3%, percent point zero three is 0 0.97. It looks just the same as an exponential increase, except this is less than 1. Okay, So uh, find the value in 8 years. So in 8 years, we plug in 8, because that would be 2013. So so about after 8 years in 2013, it's going to be about uh, 1,254 people. All right, so we're going to create a table of values to plug them in so we can graph. So there we go, and we get those. And when we graph those points, it's going to be kind of a, it's going to be a less exponential. Almost looks like a line, but it's not a line, you guys, because this is an exponential decay. So it's kind of going down in a sort of, it has a little curve to that right there, okay? So the domain is to set all real numbers. Remember, domain is how much it goes to the right or to the left, okay? It starts there, so t is greater than or equal to zero. Our range is, um, it's greater than zero, it's getting down there, getting down there, but our, our high point is at 1600, so our range is zero is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 1600. The y-intercept is the value of y when t is zero, so it was the number of people before it started losing that population at 1600. All right, let's answer a few questions here. If uh, b is greater than one in the exponential function, uh, a times b to the x, uh, is it decay or or 
or uh, growth right there. Okay, so we're going to do these one at a time. So when we had these functions here, when it was greater than 1, it was growth. When it was less than 1, then it went down. The graph went down. When it was greater than 1, it went up. So this is growth. This is decay. So, so if B is greater than 1, it's growth. When it's less than 1, it's decay. So what is the asymptote of this function right here, uh, y equals 35 times 1.1 1 .1 to the x. Well, that's greater than 1. When we graph something that was greater than 1, this would asymptotically go down towards, and then this doesn't have a restriction because it's not talking about anything. So it would keep going, and it would be going towards the line y equals 0 right there. Okay, And then so what equations should be used uh, when modeling an exponential function that models a decrease in the quantity over time? Well, there's our definition of growth and decrease, so we're going to use this guy right there. So decay means we're using the 1 minus r to the t, a times that. We could also use a times b to the t as long as we specify that, that this is less than 1. So when we're decaying, it's less than 1. Lastly, uh, there's our assignment in our class. Okay, take care, you guys.